Exodus chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Yashrael, which came into Mitzrayim. Every man and his household came with Yaakov. Reuben, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda, Yishakar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Yaakov were 70 souls, for Yosef was in Mitzrayim already. And Yosef died, and all his brethren, and all that generation, and the children of Yashrael were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Mitzrayim, which knew not Yosef. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Yashrael are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pythom and Ra Amek. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Yashrael. And the Mitzrayim made the children of Yashrael to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. And the king of Mitzrayim spoke to the Ivri midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife, to the Avrith women, and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim, and did not as the king of Mitzrayim commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Mitzrayim called for the midwives, and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Ivrith women are not as the Mitzrith women, for they are lively and are delivered. The midwives come in unto them. Therefore Elohim dwelt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared Elohim, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter he shall save alive. Exodus chapter 2. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to be his woman a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the reeds by the river brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh come down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Evrim children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to you a nurse of the Evrith women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me and I will give it you, your wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moshe. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days, when Moshe was grown, 
that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied a mystery smiting in a dream, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the mystery and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Evrim strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smite you your fellow? And he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intend you to kill me as you killed the Mitzri? And Moshe feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moshe. But Moshe fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moshe stood up and helped them, and watered their flock. And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, A mystery delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moshe was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moshe Zipporah his daughter. And she bore him a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of the Mitzrayim died and the children of Yashrael sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto Elohim by reason of the bondage. And Elohim heard their groaning and Elohim remembered his covenant with Avraham, with Yitzhak and with Yaakov. And Elohim looked upon the children of Yashrael and Elohim had respect unto them. Exodus chapter 3. Now Moshe kept the flock of Yithro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a thorn bush. And he looked, and behold, the thorn bush burned with fire, and the thorn bush was not consumed. And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the thorn bush is not burnt. And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the thorn bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohi of your father, the Elohi of Abraham, the Elohi of Yitzhak, and the Elohi of Yaakov. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Mitzrayim, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Mitzrayim, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Amorim, and the Perizim, and the Shivim, and the Yuvusim. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Yashrael has come up unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mitzrayim oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Yashrael, out of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Yashrael out of Mitzrayim? And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be a sign unto you that I have sent you when you have brought forth the people out of Mitzrayim, 
you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Yashrael, and shall say unto them, The Elohim your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moshe, Ahiah, Asher, Ahiah, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashrael, Ahiah, I am, has sent me unto you. And Elohim said moreover unto Moshe, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashrael, Yahuwah, Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, the Elohai, Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my mention unto all generations. Go, and gather the elders of Yashrael together, and say unto them, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, of Yitzhak, and of Yaakov, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Mitzrayim. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Mitzrayim, unto the land of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Amorim, and the Perizzim, and the Hivim, and the Yavusim, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Yashrael, unto the king of Mitzrayim, and you shall say unto him, Yahuwah, Elohai of the Evrim, has met with us, and now let us go. We beseech you, three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu. And I am sure that the king of Mitzrayim will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite the Mitzrayim with all my wonders which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that he will let you go. And I will give you this people favor in the sight of the Mitzrayim. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourns in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters. And ye shall spoil the Mitzrayim. Exodus chapter 4. And Moshe answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, Yahweh has not appeared unto you. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it onto the ground. And he cast it onto the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moshe fled from before it. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Put forth your hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that Yahuwah Elohai of their fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov has appeared unto you. And Yahuwah said furthermore unto him, Put now your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow, and he said, put your hand into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which you take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moshe said unto Yahuwah, O my Adonai, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since you have spoken unto your servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Yahuwah said unto him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the dumb? or deaf, or the seen, or the blind, have not I, Yahuwah? Now therefore, go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall say. And he said, 
O oh, my Adonai, send, I pray you, by the hand of him whom you will send. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moshe. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levi your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. And you shall speak unto him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be your spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to you instead of a mouth, and ye shall be to him instead of an Elohim. And ye shall take this rod in your hand, wherewith you shall do the signs. And Moshe went and returned to Yithro his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray you, and return unto my brethren, which are in Mitzrayim and see whether they be yet alive. And Yithro said to Moshe, Go in peace. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe and Midian, Go, return into Mitzrayim, for all the men are dead which sought your life. And Moshe took his woman and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe took the rod of Elohim in his hand. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, when you go to return into Mitzrayim, see that you do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. And ye shall say unto Pharaoh, thus says Yahuwah, Yashrael is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son even your firstborn. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that Yahuwah met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody man are you to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody man you are because of the circumcision. And Yahuwah said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moshe. And he went and met him in the Mount of Elohim and kissed him. And Moshe told Aaron all the words of Yahuwah, who had sent him, and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moshe and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Yashrael. And Aaron spoke all the words which Yahuwah had spoken unto Moshe, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Yashrael and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Exodus chapter 5. And afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, Elohai of Yashrael, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahuwah, that I should obey his voice to let Yashrael go? I know not Yahuwah, neither will I let Yashrael go. And they said, The Elohai of the Evrim has met with us. Let us go, we pray you, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto Yahuwah Eloheinu, lest he fall upon us with a pestilence or with the sword. And the king of the Mitzrayim said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moshe and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our Elohim. Let the more work be laid upon them, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. 
Go ye, get your straw where you can find it, yet not a aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Mitzrayim to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hastened them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Yashrael, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in the making brick, both yesterday and today, as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Yashrael came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore deal you thus with your servants? There is no straw given unto your servants. And they say to us, Make brick. And behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to Yahuwah. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you, yet shall you deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Yashriel did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, You shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily tasks. And they met Moshe and Aaron, who stood in the way, as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, Yahweh will look upon you and judge, because ye have made our Savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moshe returned unto Yahuwah and said, Adonai, wherefore have you so evil entreated this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak your name, he has done evil to this people, neither have you delivered your people at all. Exodus chapter 6. Then Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Now shall you see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And Elohim spoke unto Moshe and said unto him, I am Yahuwah. And I appeared unto Avraham, unto Yitzhak, and unto Yaakov. By El Shaddai, but by my name, Yahuwah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Yashrael, whom the Mitzrayim keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Yashrael, I am Yahuwah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Mitzrayim, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you Elohim, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohim, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Mitzrayim. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, and I will give it you for a heritage. I am Yahuwah. And Moshe spoke so unto the children of Yashrael, but they hearkened not unto Moshe for anguish of the Ruach and for cruel bondage. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, that he let the children of Yashrael go out of his land. And Moshe spoke before Yahuwah, saying, Behold, the children of Yashrael have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Yashrael and unto Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to bring the children of Yashrael out of the land of Mitzrayim. These be the heads of their fathers' houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Yashrael, Hanok and Palu, Hetzron and Carmi. These be the families of Reuben. And the sons of Shimon, Yemuel and Yamin and Ohad, and Yakin and Zokar and Shaul, the son of, Can of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Shimon. And these are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations. 
Gershon and Kohath and Merai, and the years of the life of Levi were 137 years. The sons of Gershon, Levini, and Shimi, according to their families, and the sons of Kohath, Amram, and Yitzar, and Hevron, and Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were 130 and three years. And the sons of Moriah, Makli, and Mushi, these are the families of Levi according to their generations. And Amram took him, Yochaved, his father's sister, to be his woman. And she bore him Aaron and Moshe. And the years of the life of Amram were 130 and seven years. And the sons of Yitzar, Korach and Nepheg and Zikri, and the sons of Uziel, Mishael and Elisaphan and Hithri. And Aaron took him, Elisheva, daughter of Aminadav, sister of Nakshon, to be his woman. And she bore him Nadav and Aviyo and Eleazar and Ithamar. And the sons of Karak, Asir and Elkanah and Abiasaph, these are the families of the Cori. And Eleazar, Aaron's son, took him one of the daughters of Putiel to be his woman, and she bore him Penak. These are the heads of the fathers of the Levim, according to their families. These are the Aaron and Moshe, to whom Yahweh said, Bring out the children of Yashriel from the land of Mitzrayim, according to their armies. These are they which spoke to Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to bring out the children of Yashriel from Mitzrayim. These are that Moshe and Aaron. And it came to pass on the day when Yahweh spoke unto Moshe in the land of Mitzrayim, that Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, I am Yahweh, speak you unto Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, all that I say unto you. And Moshe said before Yahuwah, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? Exodus chapter 7. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Yashrael out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Mitzrayim. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Mitzrayim, and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Yashrael, out of the land of Mitzrayim by great judgments. And the Mitzrayim shall know that I am Yahuwah, when I stretch forth my hand upon Mitzrayim and bring out the children of Yashrael from among them. And Moshe and Aaron did as Yahuwah commanded them, so did they. And Moshe was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spoke unto Pharaoh. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then you shall say unto Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moshe and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as Yahweh had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and his sorcerers. Now the magicians of Mitzrayim, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rods swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as Yahuwah had said. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Get you unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goes out unto the water, and you shall stand by the river brink, Against he come, and the rod which was turned into a serpent you shall take in your hand. And you shall say unto him, Yahuwah Elohai of the Evrim has sent me unto you, saying, Let my people go, 
that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto you would not hear. Thus says Yahuwah, In this ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Mitzrayim shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, say unto Aaron, Take your rod, and stretch out your hand upon the waters of Mitzrayim, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moshe and Aaron did so, as Yahuwah commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Mitzrayim could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians of Mitzrayim did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as Yahuwah had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Mitzrayim dug round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled. After that, Yahuwah had smitten the river. Exodus chapter 8. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your borders with frogs, and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, and into your bedchamber, and upon your bed, and into the house of your servants, and upon your people, and into your ovens, and into your kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on you and upon your people, and upon all your servants. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Mitzrayim. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Mitzrayim, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up the frogs upon the land of Mitzrayim. Then Pharaoh called for Moshe and Aaron, and said, Entreat Yahuwah, that he may take away the frogs from me, and from my people. And I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto Yahuwah. And Moshe said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for you? and for your servants, and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to your word, that you may know that there is none like unto Yahuwah Eloheinu. And the frogs shall depart from you, and from your houses, and from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moshe and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moshe cried unto Yahuwah because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And Yahuwah did according to the word of Moshe, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them, as Yahuwah had said. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out your rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as Yahuwah had said. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, 
he comes forth to the water and say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon you and upon your servants and upon your people and into your houses, and the houses of the midstream shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that you may know that I am Yahuwah in the midst of the earth. And I shall put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And Yahuwah did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Mitzrayim. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moshe and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your Elohim in the land. And Moshe said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Mitzrayim to Yahuwah Eloheinu. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Mitzrayim before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu, and he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to Yahuwah Elohika in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. And Moshe said, Behold, I go out from you, and I will entreat Yahuwah that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in letting the people go to sacrifice to Yahuwah. And Moshe went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahuwah. And Yahuwah did according to the word of Moshe. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Exodus chapter 9. Then Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go in unto Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus says Yahuwah, Elohai of the Avrim, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of Yahuwah is upon your cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous pestilence. And Yahweh shall sever between the cattle of Yashrael and the cattle of Mitzrayim, and there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of Yashrael's. And Yahweh appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow Yahweh shall do this thing in the land. And Yahweh did the thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Mitzrayim died, but of the cattle of the children of Yashrael died not one. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of Yashrael dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moshe sprinkle it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Mitzrayim, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moshe sprinkled it up toward the heavens, and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beasts. And the magicians could not stand before Moshe because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the midstream. And Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as Yahuwah had spoken unto Moshe. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. And say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Elohai of the Evrim, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon your heart, and upon your servants, and upon your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite you and your people with pestilence, and you shall be cut off from the earth. And in very deed, for this cause I have raised you up, for to show in you my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. 
Is he as yet exalt you yourself against my people that you will not let them go? Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as not been in Mitzrayim since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now and gather your cattle and all that you have in the field, for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them and they shall die. He that feared the word of Yahuwah among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of Yahuwah left his servants and his cattle in the field. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch forth your hand toward the heavens, that there may be hail in all the land of Mitzrayim, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe stretched forth his rod toward the heavens, and Yahuwah sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and Yahuwah rained hail upon the land of Mitzrayim. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Mitzrayim since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Yashrael were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moshe and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Yahweh is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat Yahuwah, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. And Moshe said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto Yahuwah, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that you may know that the earth is Yahuwah's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not fear Yahuwah Elohim. And the flax and barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moshe went out the city from Pharaoh, and spread and brought his hands unto Yahuwah, and the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Yashriel go, as Yahuwah had spoken by Moshe. Exodus chapter 10. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, and that you may tell in the ears of your son and of your son's son what things I have wrought in Mitzrayim and my signs which I have done among them. They may know that I am Yahuwah. And Moshe and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of the Evrim, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locust into your coast. And they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the remnant of that which is escaped, which remains unto you from the hail and shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. And they shall fill your houses, and the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all the Mitzrayim, which neither go your fathers nor your fathers' fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve Yahuwah Elohim. Know you not that the Mitzrayim is destroyed? And Moshe and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve Yahuwah Elohim, but who are they that should go? And Moshe said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto Yahuwah. And he said unto them, Let Yahuwah be so with you as I will let you go, and your little ones, look to it, for evil is before you. 
Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve Yahuwah, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch out your hand over the land of Mitzrayim for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Mitzrayim, and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail has left. And Moshe stretched forth his rod over the land of Mitzrayim, and Yahuwah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locust. And the locust went up over all the land of Mitzrayim and rested in all the coast of Mitzrayim. Very grievous were they. Before them there was no such locust as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Mitzrayim. Then Pharaoh called for Moshe and Aaron in haste. And he said, I have sinned against Yahuwah Elohim and against you. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray you, my sin only this once and entreat Yahuwah Elohim that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahuwah. And Yahuwah turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locust and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Mitzrayim. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Yashrael go. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch out your hand toward the heavens, that there may be darkness over the land of Mitzrayim even darkness which may be felt. And Moshe stretched forth his hand toward the heavens, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Mitzrayim three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Yashrael had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moshe and said, Go ye, serve Yahuwah, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed, let your little ones also go with you. And Moshe said, you must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto Yahuwah Eloheinu. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve Yahuwah Eloheinu. And we know not with what we must serve Yahuwah until we come thither. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get you from me, take heed to yourself, see my face no more. For in that day you see my face, you shall die. And Moshe said, You have spoken well. I will see your face again no more. Exodus chapter 11. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Mitzrayim. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of Mitzrayim. Moreover, the man Moshe was very great in the land of Mitzrayim, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moshe said, Thus says Yahuwah, About midnight will I go out into the midst of the Mitzrayim, and all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Yashrael shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how Yahuwah puts a difference between the Mitzrayim and Yashrael. And all these your servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get you out and all the people that follow you. And after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Yashrael go out of his land. Exodus chapter 12. 
And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe and Aaron in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the assembly of Yashrael, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it, according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole multitude of the assembly of Yashrael shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and matzah, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And you shall not let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, in your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, it is Yahuwah's Pesach. For I will pass through the land of Mitzrayim this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast, and against all the Elohai of Mitzrayim I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. And the blood shall be to you for a mark upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mitzrayim. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat matzah. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eats hamatz from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Yashriel. And in the first day, there shall be a holy assembly. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy assembly to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall guard the feast of Matzah. For in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Mitzrayim, Therefore shall you guard this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat matzah, until the one and twentieth day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no hamats found in your houses. For whosoever eats that which is with hamats, even that soul shall be cut off from the assembly of Yashrael, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing with hamats, and all your habitations shall you eat matzah. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Yashrael and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Pesach. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh will pass through to smite the midstream, and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And you shall guard this thing for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you are come to the land which Yahweh will give you, according as he has promised, that you shall guard this service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Pesach, who passed over the houses of the children of Yashrael and Mitzrayim, when he smote the Mitzrayim, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Yashrael went away, and did as Yahweh had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight, Yahuwah smote all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive 
that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Mitzrayim. And there was a great cry in Mitzrayim, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get ye forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Yashrael, and go serve Yahweh as ye have said. Also, take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Mitzrayim were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We will be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Yashrael did according to the word of Moshe. And they borrowed of the Mitzrayim jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of the Mitzrayim, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Mitzrayim. And the children of Yashrael journeyed from Ra'amek to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them in flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked matzah cakes, the dough which they brought forth out of Mitzrayim, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Mitzrayim and could not tarry, neither they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Yashrael who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim and in the land of Canaan, they and their fathers, was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of Yahuwah went out from the land of Mitzrayim. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahuwah for bringing them out from the land of Mitzrayim. This is that night of Yahuwah to be observed of all the children of Yashrael in their generations. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Pesach. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. You shall not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the assembly of Yashrael shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with you, and will keep the Pesach to Yahuwah, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one of that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One Torah shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. Thus did all the children of Yashrael as Yahuwah commanded, Moshe and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that Yahuwah did bring the children of Yashrael out of the land of Mitzrayim by their armies. Exodus chapter 13. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever opens the womb among the children of Yashrael, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moshe said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage, for by my strength of hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall no hamats be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Eve, and it shall be when Yahuwah shall bring ye into the land of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Amorim, and the Hevim, and the Vusim, which he swore unto your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, that ye shall keep this service in this month. Seven days ye shall eat matzah, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahuwah. Matzah shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no hamats be seen with you, neither shall there be leaven seen with you in all your quarters. And you shall show your son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Mitzrayim. And it shall be for a sign unto you upon your hand, and for a memorial between your eyes, that Yahweh's Torah may be in your mouth, 
for with a strong hand has Yahuwah brought you out of Mitzrayim. Ye shall therefore guard this ordinance and his appointed time from year to year. And it shall be when Yahuwah shall bring you into the land of the Canaanim, as he swore unto you and to your fathers, and, it, and shall give it you, that you shall set apart unto Yahuwah all that opens the womb, and every firstling that comes of a beast which you have, the male shall be Yahuwah's. And every firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among your children shall you redeem. And it shall be when your son asks you in a time to come, saying, What is this? That you shall say unto him, By strength of hand Yahuwah brought us out from Mitzrayim, from the house of bondage. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahuwah slew all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahuwah all that opens the womb, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a mark upon your hand, and for frontlets between your eyes, for by my strength of hand Yahuwah brought us forth out of Mitzrayim. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Pelishtim, although that was near. For Elohim said, Lest perchance the people repent when they see war, and they return to Mitzrayim. But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Yashrael went up harnessed out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Yashrael, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkoth, and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went, went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from the people. Exodus chapter 14. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, that they turn and encamp before Pi-ha-heroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against baal Safon. Before it, you shall encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Yashrael, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Mitzrayim may know that I am Yahuwah. And they did so. And it was told the king of Mitzrayim that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Yashrael go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Mitzrayim and captains over every one of them. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, and he pursued after the children of Yashrael. And the children of Yashrael went out with a high hand, but the Mitzrayim pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camped by the sea besides Pi-ha-heroth before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Yashrael lifted up their eyes and behold, the Mitzrayim marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Yashrael cried out unto Yahuwah. And they said unto Moshe, Because there were no graves in Mitzrayim, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Mitzrayim? Is not this the word that we did tell you in Mitzrayim, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Mitzrayim? For it had been better for us to serve the Mitzrayim than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the Yeshua of Yahuwah, which he will show you today. For the Mitzrayim who you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Yahuwah shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. 
And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Wherefore cry you unto me? Speak unto the children of Yashrael that they go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Yashrael go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Mitzrayim, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Mitzrayim shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of Elohim, which went before the camp of Yashrael, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Mitzrayim and the camp of Yashrael, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahuwah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Yashrael went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Mitzrayim pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, Yahweh looked unto the host of the Mitzrayim through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Mitzrayim, and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily, so that the Mitzrayim said, Let us flee from the face of Yashrael, for Yahuwah fights for them against the Mitzrayim. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Mitzrayim, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moshe stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Mitzrayim fled against it, and Yahuwah overthrew the Mitzrayim in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Yashrael walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahuwah saved Yashrael that day out of the hand of the Mitzrayim. And Yashrael saw the Mitzrayim dead upon the seashore. And Yashrael saw the great work which Yahuwah did upon the Mitzrayim. And the people feared Yahuwah and believed Yahuwah and his servant Moshe. Exodus chapter 15. Then sang Moshe and the children of Yashrael this song unto Yahuwah and spoke, saying, I will sing unto Yahuwah, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song. He has become my Yeshua. He is my El, and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's Elohai, and I will exalt him. Yahuwah is a man of war. Yahuwah is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellency, you have overthrown them that rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And when the blast of your nostrils, the water were gathered together, the flood stood upright as a heap and the depths were congealed in their heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your ruach, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto you, O Yahuwah, among the Elohim? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. You stretched out your hand, the earth swallowed them. You and your mercy have led them forth, the people which you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength unto your holy habitation. 
The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they shall be as still as stone. Till your people pass over, O Yahuwah, till the people pass over, which you have purchased. You shall bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Yahuwah, which you have made for you to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Adonai, which your hands have established, in the sanctuary. Yahuwah shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with the, his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea. And Yahuwah brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Yashrael went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to Yahuwah, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. So, Ma so Moshe brought Yashrael from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moshe, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and guard all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Mitzrayim. For I am Yahuwah Rofika, Yahuwah who heals you. And they came to Elim, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Exodus chapter 16. And they took their journey from Elim, and all the assembly of the children of Yashrael came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, after they departed out of the land of Mitzrayim. And the whole assembly of the children of Yashrael murmured against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Yashrael said unto them, Would to Elohim we had died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the, this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said Yahuwah unto Moshe, Behold, I will rain bread from the heavens for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my Torah or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moshe and Aaron said unto all the children of Yashrael at evening, Then ye shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out from the land of Mitzrayim. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of Yahuwah, for that he hears your murmurings against Yahuwah. And what are we that ye murmur against us? And Moshe said, This shall be when Yahuwah shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that Yahuwah hears your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moshe spoke unto Aaron, Say unto all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, Come near before Yahuwah, for he has heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole assembly of the children of Yashrael, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Yashrael. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh. And in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohim. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Yashrael saw it, 
They said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moshe said unto them, This is the bread which Yahuwah has given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Yashrael did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moshe said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moshe, but some of them left of it until the morning. And it bred worms and stank, and Moshe was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun was waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the assembly came and told Moshe. And he said unto them, This is that which Yahuwah has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will seethe. And that which remains over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning, as Moshe bade, and did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moshe said, Eat that today, for today is a Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Shabbat, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, How long refuse ye to guard my commandments and my Torah? See, for that Yahuwah has given you the Shabbat. Therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day, and the house of Yashrael called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moshe said, This is the thing which Yahuwah commands, fill an omer of it, to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before Yahuwah, to be kept for your generations. And as Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Yashrael did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna, until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Exodus chapter 17. And all the assembly of the children of Yashrael journeyed from the wilderness of sin, after their journeys, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moshe, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moshe said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt Yahuwah? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moshe and said, Wherefore is it that you have brought us up out of Mitzrayim to kill us, and our children, and our cattle with thirst? And Moshe cried unto Yahuwah, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go on before the people, and take with you of the elders of Yashrael and your rod, wherewith you smote the river, take in your hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before you, there upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Yashrael. And he called the name of the place Maka and Merivah, because of the chiding of the children of Yashrael, and because they tempted Yahuwah, saying, Is Yahuwah among us or not? Then came Amalek, and fought with Yashrael and Rephidim. And Moshe said unto Yahusha, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in my hand. 
So Yahusha did as Moshe had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moshe, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moshe held up his hand that Yashrael prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moshe's hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Yahusha discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Write this for a memorial in a zephyr, and rehearse it in the ears of Yahusha. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moshe built an altar and called the name of it Yahuwah Niki, Yahuwah my banner. For he said, because Yah has sworn that Yahuwah will have a war with Amalek from generation to generation. Exodus chapter 18. When Yithro, the priest of Midian, Moshe's father-in-law, heard of all that the Elohim had done for Moshe and for Yashrael, his people, and that Yahuwah had brought Yashrael out of Mitzrayim, then Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moshe's woman, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the Elohai of my father, said he, was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, came with his sons and his woman unto Moshe in the, into the wilderness, where he encamped at the Mount of Elohim. And he said unto Moshe, I, your father-in-law, Yithro, come unto you and your woman and her two sons with her. And Moshe went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. And Moshe told his father-in-law all that Yahuwah had done unto Pharaoh, to the Mitzrayim for Yashrael's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how Yahuwah delivered them. And Yithro rejoiced for all the goodness which Yahuwah had done to Yashrael, whom he had delivered out of the hand of Mitzrayim. And Yithro said, Blessed be Yahuwah, who has delivered you out of the hand of Mitzrayim, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hand of Mitzrayim. Now I know that Yahuwah is greater than all Elohim, for in the thing wherein they dwelt proudly, he was above them. And Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for Elohim. And Aaron came and all the elders of Yashrael to eat bread with Moshe's father-in-law before Elohim. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moshe from the morning into the evening. And when Moshe's father-in-law saw all the people, all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that you do to the people? Why sit you self alone, and all the people stand by you from morning unto evening? And Moshe said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of Elohim. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them known the statutes of Elohim and his Torah. And Moshe's father-in-law said unto him, The thing that you do is not good. You will surely wear away, both you and this people that is with you. For this thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it yourself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give you counsel, and Elohim shall be with you. Be for the people to Elohim, that you may bring the causes unto Elohim. And you shall teach them ordinances and Torah, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear Elohim, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto you, but every small matter they shall judge so shall it be easier for yourself, and they shall bear the burden with you. If you shall do this thing, 
and Elohim command you so, then you shall be able to endure, and all this people shall go also to their place in peace. So Moshe hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moshe chose able men out of all Yashrael and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought into Moshe, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moshe let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Exodus chapter 19. In the third month, when the children of Yashrael were gone forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Yashrael camped before the mount. And Moshe went up unto Elohim, and Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Yaakov, and tell the children of Yashrael, Ye have seen what I did unto the Mitzrayim, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice indeed, and guard my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which you, which you shall speak unto the children of Yashrael. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do. And Moshe returned the words of the people unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Lo, I come unto you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moshe told the words of the people unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day, for the third day Yahuwah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And you shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it, whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the shofar sounds long, they shall come up to the mount. And when Moshe went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes, and he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your woman. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the shofar exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moshe brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke because Yahuwah descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when, it, and when the voice of the shofar sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moshe spoke, and Elohim answered him by a voice. And Yahuwah came down upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mount, and Yahuwah called Moshe up to the top of the mount, and Moshe went up. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto Yahuwah to gaze, and many of them perish. And lest the priests also, which come near to Yahuwah, sanctify themselves, lest Yahuwah break forth upon them. And Moshe said unto Yahuwah, The people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for you charged us, saying, Set bounds about the mount and sanctify it. And Yahuwah said unto him, Away, get you down, and you shall come up, you and Aaron with you, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up to Yahuwah, lest he break forth upon them. So Moshe went down unto the people and spoke unto them. Exodus chapter 20. 
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah Elohaika, which have brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, Elohika, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahuwah, Elohika, in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the day of the Shabbat to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah Elohika. In it you shall do not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the day of the Shabbat and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which Yahuwah Elohika gives you. You shall not kill. You shall not break wedlock. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not lust after your neighbor's house. You shall not lust after your neighbor's woman, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is your neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moshe, Speak with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off. And Moshe drew near unto the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Thus you shall say unto the children of Yashriel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me Elohai of silver, neither shall you make unto you Elohai of gold. An altar of earth you shall make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep, and your oxen, and all places where I record my name, I will come unto you, and I will bless you. And if you will make an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone, for if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Neither shall you go up by steps unto my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Exodus chapter 21. Now these are the judgments which you shall set before them. If you obtain in every servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he come in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his woman shall go out with him. If his master have given him a woman, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my woman, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the door post. And his master shall pierce his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man surrenders his daughters to be maid servant she shall not go out as the men's servants do. If she please not her master, who has betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed, 
to surrender her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another woman, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smites a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but Elohim deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint you a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. And he that smites his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that steals a man and sells him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. He that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he, did, and he die not, but keeps his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be innocent. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his money. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's man will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid that it perish he shall let him go free for his eyes sake and if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maid servant's tooth he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake and if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten but the owner of the ox shall be innocent but if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, it has been testified to his owner, and he has not kept him in, but that he has killed a man or a woman. The ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him, whether he have gored a son or have gored a daughter. According to this judgment shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it, and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good, and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. And if the ox of one man hurts the ox of another, that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also they shall divide. Or if it be known that the ox has used to push in times past, and his owner has not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. Exodus chapter 22. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep, and kill it, or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. 
if a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the beast of his own field and of the beast of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. If fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of grain or the standing grain or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to guard and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. For all manner of transgression, whether it be for ox or for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to guard, and let it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of Yahuwah be between them both, that he has not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt, or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be a hired thing, it came for his hire. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his woman. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You shall not suffer a witch to live. Whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrifices unto any Elohim, save unto Yahuwah only, he shall be utterly destroyed. You shall neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your woman shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people that is poor by you, you shall not be to him in a usur, neither shall you lay upon him usuri. If you at all take your neighbor's raiment to pledge, you shall deliver it unto him by the sun goes down, for that is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep. And it shall come to pass when he cries unto me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. You shall not revile the Elohim, nor curse the ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe fruits and of your liquors. The firstborn of your sons shall you give unto me. Likewise shall you do with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with his dam. On the eighth day, you shall give it me, and ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. Exodus chapter 23. You shall not raise a false report, but not your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall you speak in cause to decline after many to pervert judgment. Neither shall you, you countenance a poor man in his cause. If you meet your enemy's ox or his ass going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the ass of him that hates you lying under his burden and would forbear to help him, you shall surely help with him. You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in his cause. Keep far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay you not, for I will not justify the wicked. And you shall take no gift, for the gift blinds the wise, and perverts the words of the righteous. 
also. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. In six years you shall sow your land, and shall gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie still, that the poor of your people may eat. And what they leave, the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner, you shall deal with your vineyard and with your olive yard. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your ass may rest, and the son of your handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all things that I have said unto you, be guarded, and make no mention of the name of other Elohim, neither let it be heard out of your mouth. Three times you shall keep a feast unto me in the year. You shall guard the feast of matzah. Seven days as I commanded you in the time appointed of the month of Aviv, for in it you came out from Mitzrayim, and none shall appear before me empty. And the, feats of, and the feast of Katsir, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of Asif, which is in the end of the year, when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. Three times in a year, all your males shall appear before Adonai Yahuwah. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with hamats, neither shall you, the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of Yahuwah Elohaika. You shall not see the kid in his mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place where I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. For my angel shall go before you and bring you in unto the Emorium and the Hittim and the Perizim and the Cananim and the Hevim and the Yebusim. I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their Elohim, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And you shall serve Yahweh Elohim, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing, ca there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in your land. The number of your days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before you and will destroy all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs unto you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivi and the Canaanite and the Hitti from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against you. By little and little, I will drive them out from before you until you be increased and inherit the land. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Pelestine, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall cut no covenant with them, nor with their Elohim. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their Elohim, it will surely be a snare unto you. Exodus chapter 24. And he said unto Moshe, Come up unto Yahuwah, you and Aaron, Nadav, and Abiyahu, and the seventy of the elders of Yashreel, and worship ye afar off. And Moshe alone shall come near Yahuwah, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up with him. And Moshe came and told the people all the words of Yahuwah and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahuwah has said we will do. And Moshe wrote all the words of Yahuwah and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Yashriel. And he sent the young men of the children of Yashriel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahuwah. And Moshe took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the Zephyr of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahuwah has said will we do, and be obedient. 
And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which Yahweh has cut with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moshe and Aaron, Nadav, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Yashrael. And they saw the Elohai of Yashrael, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Yashrael he laid not his hand. Also they saw the Elohim, and did eat and drink. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give you sapphire stones, and a Torah, and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. And Moshe rose up, and his minister, Yahusha, and Moshe went up into the mount of Elohim. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hori are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come up unto them. And Moshe went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yahuwah abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahuwah was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Yashrael. And Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and got up into the mount, and Moshe was in the mount forty days and forty nights. Exodus chapter 25. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, that they bring me an offering. Of every man that gives it willingly, with his heart ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod, and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shall you overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And you shall make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And you shall put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you. And you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And you shall make two caravim of gold, of beaten work shall you make them, and the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one carav on the one end, and the other carav on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the caravim on the two ends thereof. And the caravim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the caravim be. And ye shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark ye shall put the testimony that I shall give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two caravim which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I give you in commandment unto the children of Yashrael. Ye shall also make a table of shittim wood, two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about. And you shall make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about, and you shall make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And you shall make for it four rings of gold, 
and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And ye shall make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold, that the table may be borne with them. And ye shall make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover withal. Of pure gold shall ye make them. And ye shall set upon the table showbread before me always. And ye shall make a menorah of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the menorah be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the menorah out of the one side, and three branches of the menorah out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the menorah. And in the menorah shall be four bowls made like unto almonds, with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the menorah. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And ye shall make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they might give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the stuffed dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that you make them after their pattern, which was showed you in the mount. Exodus chapter 26. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet. With caravim of cunning work shall you make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together, one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And you shall make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the selvage in the coupling, and likewise shall you make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shall you make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shall you make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And you shall make fifty tatches of gold, and couple the curtains together with tatches, and it shall be one tabernacle. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. Eleven curtains shall you make. The length of one curtain shall be thirty cubits and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. And you shall couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, and shall double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And you shall make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling, and fifty loops in the edge of the curtain which couples the second. And you shall make fifty tatches of brass, and put the tatches into the loops, and couple the tent together that it may be one. And the remnant that remains of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains, shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle. And a cubit on the one side, and a cubit on the other side of that which remains in the length of the curtains of the tent. It shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side, and on that side to cover it. And you shall make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering above of badger skins. And you shall make the boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two ten inch shall there be in one board, set in order one against another. Thus shall you make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And you shall make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards on the south side southward. And you shall make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. 
And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, there shall be 20 boards and there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, you shall make six boards. And the two boards shall you make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they shall be coupled together beneath, and they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both that they shall be for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And you shall make bars of shatim wood, fire for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the two sides westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from one end to end, and you shall overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold for places for the bars, and you shall overlay the bars with gold. And you shall rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed you in the mount. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work. With caravim shall it be made. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of shatim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And you shall hang up the veil under the tatches that you may bring it thither within the veil the ark of the testimony and the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy and you shall put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place and you shall set the table without the veil and the menorah over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south and you shall put the table on the north side and you shall make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework. And ye shall make for the hanging five pillars of shatim wood and overlay them with gold, and their hooks shall be of gold, and ye shall cast five sockets of brass for them. Exodus chapter 27. And ye shall make an altar of shatim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And you shall make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and you shall overlay it with brass. And you shall make his pans to receive his ashes, and his shovels, and his basins, and his flesh hooks, and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof you shall make of brass. And you shall make for it a grate of network of brass, and upon the net shall you make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And you shall put it under the compass of the altar beneath, that the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And you shall make staves for the altar, staves of shatim wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be put upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Hollow with boards shall you make it, as it is showed you in the mount, so shall they make it. And you shall make the court of the tabernacle for the south side southward. There shall be hangings from the court of fine twine linen of a hundred cubits long for one side. And the twenty pillars thereof and their twenty sockets shall be of brass. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets shall be of silver. And likewise, from the north side in length there shall be hangings of a hundred cubits long and his twenty pillars and their twenty sockets of brass the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the breadth of the court on the west side shall be hangings of 50 cubits, their pillars 10 and their sockets 10. And the breadth of the court on the east side eastward shall be 50 cubits. The hangings of one side of the gate shall be 15 cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. And on the other side shall be hangings 15 cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. And for the gate of the court shall be a hanging of 20 cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework and their pillars shall be four and their sockets four and all the pillars round about their court shall be filleted with silver. Their hooks shall be of silver and their sockets of brass. The length of the court shall be a hundred cubits and the breadth 
50 everywhere, and the height five cubits of five fine twine linen and their sockets of brass. All the vessels of the tabernacle and all the service thereof, and all the pins thereof, and all the pins of the court shall be of brass. And ye shall command the children of Yashriel that they bring ye pure oil, olive beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the assembly without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall order it from evening to morning before Yahuwah. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Yashriel. Exodus chapter 28. And take unto you Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Yashriel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadav, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Aaron's sons, and you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. And you shall speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the Ruach Hokamah, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate and an ephod, and a robe, an embroidered coat, a turban, and a belt. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and fine twine linen with cunning work. It shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. And the belt of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And you shall take two onyx stones, and grave on them the names of the children of Yashreo. Six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Yashreel. You shall make them to be set in ouches of gold. And you shall put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of a memorial unto the children of Yashreel. And Aaron shall bear their names before Yahuwah upon his two shoulders for memorial. And you shall make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the ends of wreathen work shall you make them and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. And you shall make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the work of the ephod, you shall make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen shall you make it. Four square it shall be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And you shall set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Yashriel, Twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. And ye shall make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen work of pure gold. And ye shall make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And ye shall put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two wreathen chains you shall fasten in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And you shall make two rings of gold, and you shall put them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And the two other rings of gold you shall make and shall put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the fore part thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the belt of the ephod. And they shall 
bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it may be above the belt of the ephod, and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Yashriel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes in unto the holy place for a memorial before Yahuwah continually. And you shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before Yahuwah. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Yashriel upon his heart before Yahuwah continually. And you shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a habergun, that it be not rent. And beneath, upon the hem of it, you shall make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goes in unto the holy place before Yahuwah, and when he comes out that he die not. And ye shall make a plate of pure gold, engrave upon it like the engravings of a signet, Kodesh Yahuwah. And ye shall put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the turban, upon the forefront of the turban it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Yashriel shall hallow in all their holy gifts. And it shall be always upon his forehead, that they might be accepted before Yahuwah. And ye shall embroider the coat of fine linen, and ye shall make the turban of fine linen. And ye shall make the belt of needlework. And for Aaron's sons, ye shall make coats, and ye shall make for them belts, and bonnets shall ye make for them, for glory and for beauty. And ye shall put them upon Aaron your brother and his sons with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And ye shall make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the assembly, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and his seed after him. Exodus chapter 29. And this is the thing that you shall do unto them, to hollow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and matzah, and matzah cakes tempered with oil, and matzah wavers anointed with oil, a wheat and flour shall you make them. And you shall put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons you shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall wash them with water. And you shall take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat, the robe of the ephod, and the ephod, and the breastplate, and gird him with the belt of the ephod. And you shall put the turban upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the turban. Then shall you take the anointing oil, and pour it upon his head, and anoint him. And you shall bring his sons, and put coats upon them, and you shall gird them with belts, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statue, and you shall consecrate Aaron and his sons. And you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the assembly, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock, and you shall kill the bullock before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the inwards and the caul that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall you burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. You shall also take one ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram, 
and you shall slay the ram, and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it round about upon the altar. And you shall cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him and his legs and put them unto his pieces and unto his head. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall take the other ram and Aaron and his sons, shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then you shall kill the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And you shall take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him. And he shall be hollowed and his garments and his sons and his sons garments with him. Also, you shall take of the ram, the fat and the rump and the fat that covers the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and the right shoulder, for it is a ram of consecration. And one loaf of bread, and one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer out of the basket of the matzah that is before Yahuwah. And ye shall put all the hands of Aaron, and in the hands of his sons, and shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And ye shall receive them of their hands, and burn them upon the altar for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor before Yahuwah. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before Yahuwah, and it shall be your part. And you shall sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved and which is heaved up, of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron and of that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons by a statute forever from the children of Yashrael. For it is a heave offering, and it shall be a heave offering from the children of Yashrael, of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave of the offering unto Yahuwah. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him, to be anointed therein, and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days, when he comes into the tabernacle of the assembly to minister in the holy place. And you shall take the ram of the consecration and seethe his flesh in the holy place. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. And thus shall you do unto Aaron and to his sons, according to all the things which I have commanded you. Seven days shall you consecrate them, and you shall offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And you shall cleanse the altar when you have made an atonement for it, and you shall anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days you shall make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which you shall offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at evening. And with one lamb a tenth dill of flour mingled with the fourth part of hen of beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at evening, and shall do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations, at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And there I will meet with the children of Yashrael, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Yashrael, 
and will be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yahweh Elohim, that brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, that I may dwell among them. I am Yahweh Elohim. Exodus chapter 30. And you shall make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood shall you make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. You shall overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and you shall make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shall you make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it shall you make it. And they shall be four places for the staves to bear it withal. And you shall make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning, where he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before Yahuwah throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements, once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, When you take the sum of the children of Yashrael after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto Yahuwah, when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. This they shall give, every one that passes among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A half shekel be the offering of Yahuwah. Everyone that passes among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto Yahuwah. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When they give an offering unto Yahuwah to make an atonement for your souls. And you shall take the atonement money of the children of Yashreel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Yashreel before Yahuwah to make an atonement for your souls. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, You shall also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And you shall put it between the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar, and you shall put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the assembly, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Moreover, Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take also unto you principal spices of pure myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, in two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calmus, two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia, five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive a hen. And you shall make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. And you shall anoint the tabernacle of the assembly therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the menorah, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all his vessels, and the laver, and his foot. And you shall sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And you shall speak unto the children of Yashreel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. 
whosoever compounds any like it or whosoever puts any of it upon a stranger shall even be cut off from his people. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Take unto you sweet spices, stacte, and onyx, and galbanum. These sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall there be a light weight. And you shall make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And you shall beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the assembly, where I will meet with you it shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which you shall make, you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto you holy for Yahuwah. Whosoever shall make like unto that, to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. Exodus chapter 31. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, See, I have called by name Bethsalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Yehuda, And I have filled him with the Ruach Elohim, in wisdom and in understanding, and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of temper, to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, behold, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Akimach, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded you. The tabernacle of the assembly, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and his furniture, and the pure menorah, with all his furniture, and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the labor his foot and the cloths of service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest office and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded you shall they do. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe saying, speak also unto the children of Yashrael saying, Truly, my Shabbat, ye shall guard, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am Yahuwah, Yahuwah who sanctifies you. Ye shall guard the Shabbat, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever does any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest. Holy to Yahuwah. Whosoever does any work in the Shabbat, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Yashriel shall guard the Shabbat to keep the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Yashriel forever. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moshe, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, Two sapphire of testimony, sapphire stones written with the finger of Elohim. Exodus chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, uh, Make us Elohim, which shall go before us. For as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we know not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your women, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be your Elohim, O Yashrael, which brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go, 
get you down for your people which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshiped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, these be your Elohim, O Yashriel, which have brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, I have seen this people and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of you a great nation. And Moshe besought Yahuwah and said, Yahuwah, why does your wrath wax hot against your people, which you have brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Mitzrayim speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out? to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against your people. Remember Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yashrael, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahweh repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moshe turned and went down from the mount, and the two sapphires of the testimony were in his hand. The sapphires were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the sapphires were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim, graven upon the sapphires. And when Yahusha heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moshe, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moshe's anger waxed hot. And he cast the zapphires out of his hands and broke them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Yashrael drink of it. And Moshe said unto Aaron, What did this people unto you, that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. You know the people, that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us Elohim, which shall go before us. For as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we know not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moshe saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moshe stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahweh's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of Yashrael, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate, throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moshe, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. For Moshe had said, Consecrate yourselves today to Yahuwah even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto Yahuwah. Perchance I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moshe returned unto Yahuwah and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them Elohai of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray you, out of the, your zephyr which you have written. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my zephyr. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day which I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And Yahweh plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Exodus chapter 33. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Depart, and go up hence, you and the people which you have brought up out of the land of Mitzrayim, 
unto the land which I swore unto Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, saying, Unto your seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, and the Mori, and the Hitti, and the Perizzi, and the Hivi, and the Yavusi, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of you, for you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you in the way. And when the people heard the evil report, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For Yahweh had said unto Moshe, Say unto the children of Yashriel, Ye are stiff-necked people. I will come up in the midst of you in a moment, and consume you. Therefore now put off your ornaments from you, that I may know what to do unto you. And the children of Yashriel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moshe took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the assembly. And it came to pass that everyone which sought Yahuwah went out unto the tabernacle of the assembly, which was without the camp. And it came to pass, when Moshe went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after Moshe until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moshe entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and Yahuwah talked with Moshe. And all the people saw the cloudy pillars stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe face to face, as a man speaks unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Yahusha, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moshe said unto Yahuwah, See, you say unto me, Bring up this people. And you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. And he said unto him, If your presence go not with me, carry us not a pence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight? Is it not in that you go with us? So shall we be separated, I and your people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah before you, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, You cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And Yahuwah said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus chapter 34. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Who hew you two sapphire stones? like unto the first. And I will write upon these sapphires the words that were in the first sapphires which you broke. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto the Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with you, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two sapphire stones like unto the first, and Moshe rose up early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as Yahuwah had commanded him, and took in his hand the two sapphire stones. And Yahuwah descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah El, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children 
and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. And Moshe made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Adonai, let my Adonai, I pray you, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. And he said, Behold, I cut a covenant before all your people. I will do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which you are shall see the work of Yahuwah, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with you. Guard that which I command you this day. Behold, I drive out before you the Emory, and the Canaanite, and the Hitti, and the Perizzi, and the Hivi, and the Yavusi. Take heed to yourself, lest you cut a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither you go, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their Asherah poles. For you shall worship no other El, for Yahuwah Cana, Yahuwah's jealous is my name. He is a jealous El. Lest you cut a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring after their Elohim, and do sacrifice unto their Elohim, and one call you, and you eat of his sacrifice, and take of their daughters unto your sons, and their daughters go whoring after their Elohim, and make your sons go whoring after their Elohim. You shall make no moden Elohai. The feast of matzah shall you guard. Seven days shall you eat matzah, as I commanded you in the time of the month of Aviv. For in the month of Aviv you came out from Mitzrayim. All that opens the womb is mine, and every firstling among your cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you redeem him not, then you shall break his neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, in earing time and in harvest you shall rest. And you shall observe the, feats of, the feast of Katsir, and a thief at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before Adonai Yahuwah, the Elohai of Yashriel. For I will cast out the nations before you, and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire your land, when you shall go up to appear before Yahuwah Elohaika thrice in a year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall, you, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Pesach be left until the morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring unto the house of Yahuwah Elohaika. You shall not see the kid in his mother's milk. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Write these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have cut a covenant with you and with Yashreel. And he was there with Yahuwah forty days and forty nights. He did, either, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the sapphires the words of the covenant, the ten devarim. And it came to pass, when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with the two sapphires of testimony in Moshe's hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moshe knew not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Yashreel saw Moshe, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moshe called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the assembly returned unto him. And Moshe talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Yashreel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that Yahweh had smoked with him in the mount. Until Moshe had done speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. But when Moshe went in before Yahuwah to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spoke unto the children of Yashreel, which he was commanded. And the children of Yashreel saw the face of Moshe, that the skin of Moshe's face shone, and Moshe put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Exodus Chapter 35. And Moshe gathered all the assembly of the children of Yashreel together and said unto them, These are the words which Yahuwah has commanded that ye shall do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be you, to you a holy day, a Shabbat of rest to Yahuwah. Whosoever does work therein shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Shabbat. And Moshe spoke unto all the assembly of the children of Yashreel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded, saying, 
Take ye from among you an offering unto Yahuwah. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of Yahuwah, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins and shatim wood, and oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come, and make all that Yahuwah has commanded, the tabernacle, his tent, and his coverings, his tatches, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets. The ark and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves and all his vessels and the showbread, the menorah also for the light and his furniture and his lamps with the oil for the light, and the incense altar and his staves and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering with his brazen grate, his staves, and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and their sockets, and the hanging for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords, the cloth of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the assembly of the children of Yashrael departed from the presence of Moshe. And they came every one whose heart stirred him up and every one whom his Ruach made willing. And they brought Yahuwah's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the assembly and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women as many as were willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold and every man that offered an offering of gold unto Yahuwah and every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought Yahuwah's offering and every man with whom was found shatim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair, and the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate, and the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Yashriel brought a willing offering unto Yahuwah every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which Yahuwah had commanded to be made by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe said unto the children of Yashreel, See, Yahuwah is called by name Bethsalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Yehuda, And he has filled him with the Ruach Elohim, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works to work in gold, and in silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of wood, to make in any manner of cunning work. And he has put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Akikamach of the tribe of Dan. Them has he filled with the wisdom of heart to work all manner of work, of the engraver, and of the cunning workman, and of the embroiderer in blue, and in purple, and in scarlet, and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. Exodus chapter 36. Then brought Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom Yahweh put wisdom and understanding to know how to work, all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that Yahweh had commanded. And Moshe called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart Yahweh had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moshe all the offering which the children of Yashreel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary, to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning, 
and all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spoke unto Moshe, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which Yahuwah commanded to make. And Moshe gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet. With caravim of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one into another, and the other five curtains he coupled one into another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain for one selvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty tashes of gold and coupled the curtains one into another with the tashes, so it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size, and he coupled the five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling. And fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain, which couples the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together, that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made the boards for the tabernacle of shatim wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. One board had two, two tenons, equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward. And forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the two sides of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle and the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. And he made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold, and he made their rings of gold to be places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen with caravine made he it of cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of shatim wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four sockets of silver and he made a hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of needlework. And the five pillars of it with their, with their hooks, and he overlaid their chapiters and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass. Exodus 37. And Bezalel made the ark of shatim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold, within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. 
and he made staves such as team wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two caravim of gold, beaten out of one piece, made he them. On the two ends of the mercy seat, one carob on the end on this side, and another carob on the other end on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the caravim on the two ends thereof. And the caravim spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat, word were the faces of the caravim. And he made the table of shatim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and he made thereunto a crown of gold round about it. Also, also he made thereunto a border of a hand breadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. And he made the staves of shatim wood, and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes, and his spoons, and his bowls, and his covers, to cover withal of pure gold. And he made the menorah of pure gold, of beaten work made he the menorah. His shaft and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the menorah out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the menorah out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the menorah. And in the menorah were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense of the altar of the shatim wood. The length of it was a cubit and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same and he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it, under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shatim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil, and the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. Exodus 38. And he made the altar a burnt offering of shatim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and the flesh hooks, and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the compass thereof beneath unto the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shatim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar hollow with boards. And he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking glass of the woman assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And he made the court on the south side southward. The hangings of the court were of fine twine linen, a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty and their brazen sockets twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver, and for the north side the hangings were a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty, 
the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of 50 cubits, their pillars 10 and their sockets 10, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the rest, for the east side eastward, 50 cubits, the hangings of the one side of the gate were 15 cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on this hand and that hand were hangings of 15 cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about were of fine twine linen, and the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of the chapiters of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework, a blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. And 20 cubits was the length and the height and the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars were four and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver and the overlaying of their chapiters and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of the testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moshe, for the service of the Levim by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron the priest, and Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Yehuda, made all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And with him was Aholiab, son of Achikamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that were numbered of the assembly was a hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A bekah for every man, that is, a half shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of all the hundreds talents of silver were cast, the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, a hundred sockets of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlay their chapters and filleted them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and the brazen altar and the brazen grate for it and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Exodus chapter 39. And of the blue, and purple, and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and made the holy garments for Aaron, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he made the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates, and cut it into wires, to work it in the blue, and in the purple, and in the scarlet, and in the fine linen with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it, to couple it together, by the two edges was it coupled together. And the belt of his ephod that was upon it was of the same according to the work thereof of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold, graven as signets are graven with the names of the children of Yashrael. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod, that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Yashrael, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he made the breastplate of cunning work, like the work of the ephod, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof, being doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardis, and a topaz, and a carbuncle. This was the first row. And the second row 
an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond, and the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings, and the stones were according to the names of the children of Yashriel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name, according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two golden rings and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it over against other coupling thereof above the belt of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the belt of the ephod and that the breastplate might not be loosed from the ephod, ephod as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe, as the hole of a habergun, with a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twine linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe, round about between the pomegranates a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe to minister in, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they made the coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons, and a turban of fine linen, and a goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twine linen, and a belt of fine twine linen, and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet, Kodesh Yahuwah, holiness to Yahuwah. And they tied unto it a lace of blue to fasten it on a high upon the turban as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly finished. And the children of Yashriel did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moshe, the tent and all his furniture, his tashes, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets, and the covering of rams, skins dyed red, and the coverings of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, the pure menorah, with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for the light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle, the brazen altar, his grate of brass, his staves, all his vessels, the labor, and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars, and his sockets, and the hanging for the court gate his cords, and his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the assembly. The cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office, according to all that Yahweh commanded Moshe, so the children of Yashrael made all the work. And Moshe did look upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahweh had commanded. Even so, they done it. And Moshe blessed them. Exodus chapter 40. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, On the first day of the month shall you set up the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly. And you shall put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil. And you shall bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And you shall bring in the menorah, and light the lamps thereof. And you shall set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony. 
and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly. And you shall set the laver between the tent of the assembly and the altar and shall put water therein. And you shall set up the court round about and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and shall hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. And you shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels and sanctify the altar and it shall be an altar most holy. And you shall anoint the laver and his foot and sanctify it. And you shall bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and wash them with water. And you shall put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And you shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their, their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moshe, according to all that Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moshe reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above upon it as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering, and covered the ark of the testimony, as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And he put the table in the tent of the assembly, upon the side of the tabernacle northward, without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before Yahuwah, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he put the menorah in the tent of the assembly, over against the table, on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the assembly before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of burnt offerings by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly. And offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he set the lever between the tent of the assembly and the altar, and put water there to wash withal. And Moshe and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the assembly, and when they came near into the altar, they washed as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle, the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moshe finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the assembly, and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the assembly because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Yashrael went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahuwah was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Yashrael throughout all their journeys. And this concludes the book of Exodus. Thank you, and I appreciate you reading with me.